reporters rolls on through the mid-morning hours. Guess who's here? Jen Carfagno back out of the snow uh, for a couple of days now. Jen, talk about what's coming up at 9. Yeah, I mean, a lot going on. You guys have been talking about the risk of severe, the flooding. We're going to continue talking about that, really keeping a close eye on storms today and tomorrow. We'll time them out hour by hour. Plus, it is Friday and it's time for us to crown a new best in state. And today, we're headed to Indiana. Hmm. So, any guesses as to what our viewers voted on about the best thing about the Hooser? I've state? never been to Indiana, but popcorn mm. comes to mind. So, you got Purdue, you got, the, is one you got the, the Speedway. You know, they make the most popcorn in the whole country, and I love popcorn. Interesting. They grow the most popcorn? Yeah, they do. Yeah. They make the most. Yeah. This is in the Corn Belt. It's so, in the Corn Belt. Yeah, it's in the Corn Belt. I mean, anyway. there's actually, there's surprising things I've learned. There's a big casino. we, we got to tune in to find out. You've that's that's the in. bottom line. That's the bottom line. We've got to tune in. They've got okay. the city with the most roundabouts. Um, of course, Notre Dame. I mean, there's. And I'll be there for the eclipse. I got Indianapolis. Oh, that's that's the best I drew that straw. Oh, okay, oh, so there you go. You, we'll see what yeah. happens. I hope that weather cooperates. Yes, let's just hope we don't have a day. Like what? today. Yeah, let's hope we don't have today like we're having today. Or everybody's going to get skunked. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd be right. right. Mexico, South Mexico would be the best spot to go. Uh, yes. Anyway, we'll have much more on that coming up here. Um, and that's at 940 Eastern. Glad you're doing off. that. Focus on every yeah. state in yeah. the country. Yeah, it's a year-long it. series. Very cool. All right, let's get you out the door in the southeast. Let's do it. With umbrellas and with a threat for severe as well. All right, so knowledge is powering. You know what? You're going to be powered up with the information we're going to share with you. We're with you all the way through the mid-morning hours to get you ready for the big events in your neighborhood. All right, a soggy Friday will be in place here in the south. Places like Jackson, Mississippi, already getting the brunt of some of the storms as they continue the slow push to the east. So this, this is, is awful yeah. ride yeah. this morning. Look at Jackson. Oof. Oh, it's you know it's a mess with the heavy rainfall. We have storms in Texas. It's caused a ground stop at DFW. Dallas has some departure delays at Love Field. I mean. It's yeah. a rainy morning. Yeah, better get used to it because we're going to be seeing this affecting millions of people over the next several days. Uh, it's going to be a story along the I-10, I-20 corridors, and I mean, just a repeat process, more of the same, and yeah, yeah so flooding very likely. And actually, not just rain and snow, we have, I mean, not just rain and storms, we have snow as well this yeah. morning. I-80 is closed again. Oh, this time oh it's gosh. in Nebraska, yeah. in North Platte, and about 130 miles of it. I mean, look at this winter wonderland out here. You know, uh, that's one of the most compelling shots of North Platte I've ever seen. It's a wonderful place. There's some incredible parking garages in North Platte. Unbelievable. They really are. Some of the best in the Midwest. Absolutely. You guys, look at the snow and how the bushes are all leaning over. This is so much snow that they set a record, not just a daily record yesterday, but an all-time snowiest day on record with 15 Damn inches, 15.3 inches of snow. And then they, they up to like 17.4 now. Oh my gosh. Well, Winter's well, hanging on. Right? Stubbornly. It, you yeah. stubbornly. And sometimes in March, mm -hmm. early to mid March, we want to put it aside. Yeah, I mean, because it surprises that. that we're getting snow, but this much snow is a lot, obviously, a setting lot. records. Absolutely. Yeah. And it has been uh, certainly, oh, wow, although the trains are moving, there is traffic that's been affected on places like I-80. You see the birds moving in the background, but we're going to fly on to this part of the story. Mm -hmm. In today's big deal, we're going to be dealing with uh, this big... Yeah, you know, um, and really driving is going to be one of the biggest threats kind of with this storm because of how much rain we're going to have and just the problems with hydroplaning and all the other challenges that Natalie Dale talked about. The timing of it, too, is late night for the worst of the rainfall and the heaviest of the rates. You can see, you know, we get into some showers, evening is going to be wet here with some moderate rain chances, but the heavy rain comes in after midnight, continues to the overnight, and maybe lessening a bit to more moderate rainfall into the early morning and through the afternoon, actually, then tapering off. So really just trying to avoid the peak hours here is ideal, you know, especially if you wait until after this happens, you can kind of assess what's going on on the roadways at this point. And Atlanta's not the only city. It's just a good example of, you know, what we're going to be working with. The radar actually showing us some light rain officially right now out there, but there's not a lot actually falling here. It's very light and sort of scattered at the moment. It's the flood watches in place for what's to come, and that's when they go into effect later tonight um, for Atlanta. We've got flood watches in Birmingham and Montgomery as well. Here comes the rain. Again, we, Jake, Greg talked about where we do have that severe threat too, but I want to just focus in on the heavy rain concern where we are looking at inches of rain, potentially two to five inches of rain, maybe even three to five inches of rain. I-20 south of that, um, getting all the way to I-10 in terms of heavy rainfall, but there's going to be a zone that may even pick up five or six inches of rain and this is on top of a very saturated week. I just look back at the past seven days, and this exact area just picked up about five to six inches of rain in the past seven days. So it has definitely been a soggy stretch here. So soil is saturated. Streams and creeks already running pretty uh, pretty full, and we're going to add more rain onto it. So that's why flooding is likely. Watching Birmingham, Atlanta, Montgomery, Macon, that area, that zone, most likely to see concerns. But you can see it stretches out, you know, all the way from Jackson, where it's pouring out there right now. And we showed you how wet things are stretching over 
over into parts of South Carolina. To time it out for you, rain coming through Nashville. We've got rain coming through um, going all the way down I-65 by this evening. Some heavy at times starts to pick up in the Atlanta area as well and down towards Macon. We've got Saturday's forecast here early. This is early in the morning. This is 4 a.m. Pretty wet with rain here, heavy at times. But you notice by about 10 o'clock, everything is shifting out. And so you'll have still some lingering showers. But by the afternoon, those showers will be few and far between. Now, when it comes to severe weather, you got to keep watch on areas like Macon, Valdosta, Savannah, Charleston, Columbia. They all have the chance for getting into some severe weather tomorrow. We're going to watch for that in these storms here. And there is a Torcon of a three. So that's a chance of an isolated tornado along with damaging winds or hail. And of course, the heavy rain threat, Reynolds. My gosh, yeah, we get a lot. Um, maybe some thunderstorms. Here. Let's look St. Louis first. We start with the rain out there. You see today is a wet day. Showers pretty much off and on throughout the day. Temperatures, not that cold. I mean, it could be a worse day, I suppose. Um, but we do have that rain coming down. The heavier stuff is going to be over here into Indiana, Ohio. Indiana is a mess with rain right now everywhere. Michigan, this is where we could get about one to two inches of rain. For everyone else, it's kind of tapering off. So it, the heaviest of stuff has now already moved east. We actually need a lot more, especially in Iowa, where we have extreme drought. Uh, you look at a lot of the Midwest here. We, you know, we had not a snowy winter. We didn't actually have a ton of precip this winter. And so overall, you can see the drought has worked in. Um, so far with rainfall, Stockton, Eudora, down here in southern Missouri, we've seen more than three or four inches of rain. So there has been some spots that have gotten the rainfall, but it's not up in Iowa where we need it. And now a lot of this is pushing east. You can see in southern Illinois, into Indiana. That's where we're getting some of the heavier rainfall. Plus the snowfall is happening out here too. I checked Omaha. It is snowing there for you. Temperatures are in the upper 20s. Um, just south and west of there in Nebraska, uh, the city is escaping my mind right now, but there's about a four inch total not too far from there. And of course, North Platte as you heard, I-80 is closed because of the 17 inches of snow that we've had there. Um, but we're going to be watching mainly rain. I mean, Chicago, it's rain. 42 degrees right now. Showers off and on throughout the day today. Showers lifting up. You can see some heavy at times. Indianapolis, and we'll be watching this moving east, but slowly moving east into the weekend, Reynolds. You know, I'm old enough to remember that yesterday we had some room. Gosh, I feel like we got to catch your breath. We've got more than a few weather topics to talk about today, don't we? And we didn't even get to everything yet. No, no. <laughs> we still have to get to the West yes. because we've got snow happening right now in Colorado. Mm. And then we've got a number of storms coming into the West Coast. Yeah, another one going to bring some snow to Central mm. and even North. gracious. Yes. Another wave of stormy weather is pulling into parts of the West, the Cascades, the Sierra. We've got it in the forecast here. Let's first look at the rainy side of all of this. Portland, Oregon. When did you last see the sun? I guess yesterday. We had some. We had sunshine yesterday. I hope you bottled that up because it's cloudy today. The rain comes back tomorrow. It is in place Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So it's going to be next Thursday until we next get to see the sunshine. It's a pretty stormy pattern out here. And not to say it's going to rain every single hour of all of these days, but we've got a couple of storm systems lined up ready to come in, especially pointed at the Pacific Northwest. Uh, I did check Atmospheric River, uh, the scale and you know, it's a category one coming in. It's not the strongest, but there's so much of it that it's going to be adding up to three to five inches of rain in a large area, coastal Washington, Oregon, all the way down into Northern California. So you know, Seattle, Portland, Medford, Eugene, all going to get into some heavier rainfall and the snow too, um, especially by the end of the weekend when it gets a little colder, we'll see some of those snow levels dropping and we'll talk, uh, talk about that. Let me just show you how it plays out with some rain moving in today, Seattle, especially later in the day, tomorrow morning, We've got that rain spreading down the entire uh, western third of Oregon is going to be dealing with it. And Northern California, too, maybe even down to the Bay Area. The next one that comes in, though, Saturday night into Sunday, this one does move farther south. So it gets us down through San Francisco and San Jose. Uh, we've got the Reno area and Truckee. You've got some snow showers coming back in here, perhaps around South Lake Tahoe as well. And you know, I think Sunday night that we'll have to keep an eye on past levels for travel concerns there. Um, Cascades, too. We'll be watching the passes for the concern of more snow coming in. And when it comes to the rainfall, it's just another round after round after round. This is Tuesday. You can see how finally by that point things start spreading inland. Now, snowfall, we do have another two to three feet possible here in the Cascades of Washington. We just picked up three feet of snow at Stevens Pass in Washington. So we're going to add more to that here, really building that snowpack finally, Reynolds. There you go. They need it. That's good. That's I've been following the, uh, the tower cam up here, and most people are just wearing like
like, you know, they're wearing a jacket, but then the hoods aren't up and there's no umbrellas because it's just not been raining that heavy just yet. Yeah, uh, kind of a raw day. I mean, you're in the 40s and not super, super cold, not super, super warm, but you've got the dreary conditions. Wind east and out, northeast out of 12. Uh. Yeah, uh, wind chill's 37, though. There you go. So, That's true. Good you know, point. it's not that it's cold, but it's not super warm either. And we've got rain that is pretty steady throughout the entire state of Indiana, southern Illinois. Then the snow back here. Absolutely. You know, we'll take it because remember, we do have a lack of moisture in this mm -hmm. zone. We've got to have it. Very important for our farmers, no question. Yeah. Uh, now, the heaviest of stuff, though, is going to be, I think, southern Illinois, parts of Indiana. Uh, we'll see. This might overachieve a bit with rainfall totals in eastern Iowa. We know the snow overachieved in North Platte. Oh, that's very true. Uh, right now in Marquette, different worlds for you. Partly cloudy skies. You've got 34 degrees. A bit warmer in Detroit, 46, and, well, in Indianapolis, Indianapolis rather, uh, you've got 50s in rain. Yeah. All right. So, so Des Moines, you're 34 in rain. That's got to be one of the worst. Uh, because no, thank you. No, would you rather you. snow? I mean, you're close. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. And uh, let's see. Rain still to come through tomorrow in Michigan. Let's just say you're going to get a little bit of it, okay? A lot of it. You've got rain mainly on the thumb, but you go to Boyne Highland, Petoskey, Charles Boy, it's going to be the snow game for you. You know, we're at the point in the season where it's not surprising you're getting rain and not snow, but it's still like questioning, are we, we going to get any more snow? Yeah. I know. We're getting really close. I think we're done. I think we're done with the big, big snow, but we'll, we'll see. Right now, it's the big, big rain we're talking about. Going forward, here's your Friday afternoon and evening hours. Just in time for the commute, Jen. Not exactly the best for Detroit or Chicago. Yeah, and it's rain. That's going to be uh, with us into the evening hours, to the overnight. We'll have rain. Cleveland, Saturday morning, you wake up. It is raining. Pittsburgh, too. But... There may be a brief change to snow in the end. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Um, <laughs> right there. You know all that ice we have over the Great Lakes? Oh, yeah, we don't have any whatsoever. <laughs> so, yeah, I think we could be seeing some lake effect here, possibly in the Highlands, uh, certainly near mm -hmm. Traverse Bay. Yeah, I mean, east of Cleveland, maybe a little snow. I, it's going to be short-lived. Yeah. The ground is warm, so you know, it's going to be hard to accumulate. Yeah, my goodness, warm and dry. So, yeah, that is exactly what the doctor ordered. Hey, speaking of doctors, I know one named Dr. Greg Postel. Into detail here, actually, speaking of the New York City area, our virtual view technology takes us to Central Park. And today is the perfect opportunity to get outdoors, mostly sunny, but... By tonight, we're going to see the sunshine give way to some clouds, followed by the heavy rainfall. And, you know, wind actually coupled with the rain and maybe even a few thunderstorms will feel some flood concerns along the northeast coast this weekend. That onshore flow around the time of high tide, plus the rain trying to drain out through those spots, they're all going to create a mess here. So coastal flooding is another concern that we've got out here. But let's just track the rain. This is 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. A couple of showers now making their way in across northern Jersey. It's really in to the later in the day. This is about three, four, five o'clock. That's when the rain really spreads out over the entire area. Northern Jersey, New York City, um, Long Island, up to Connecticut. We've got rainfall everywhere. And some of it's heavy at times, especially getting into the evening. This is now nine o'clock uh, for you at night. And you can see the very heavy rain that is in the forecast here. The rainfall rates picking up. Annoying for driving in here. Could be dangerous for driving because of that heavy rainfall. But then by Sunday morning, we're getting a break across this area. Now, let's get a zoom in and look at that forecast here. It's Saturday afternoon and Saturday night. That's the bulk of our weather. By Sunday, we're looking better, and Sunday night, um, it's much better. The only difference is that it's a lot cooler. Temperatures down in the 30s, and the wind chill factor will be in the 20s. Philadelphia, we get a few showers earlier in the day. You'll see maybe a few around on Saturday morning, but it's, again, like New York City, late in the day on Saturday, about 3, 4, 5 o'clock, that the rain really picks up in intensity. Some of this, too, very heavy at times, the kind of rain where you know it's tough for driving, ponding of water on the roadways, road conditions will be slow. We'll be watching that into the overnight hours, but then by Sunday morning, it's getting out of here. So it feels like it's taking forever to come in, but it does move out pretty quick. Philadelphia, we got Saturday, Saturday night, but then by Sunday, well, it's, it's dry Reynolds. It's just that 49 is going to feel a lot chillier than that. Down. Motor Speedway. That's right. The Indianapolis Motor Speedway has been a fixture for a long time. In fact, going back to 1905, making it the third oldest permanent automobile racetrack on the planet. It can also, Jen, hold up to 400,000 people. Wow. Yeah. Well, this year, two big events will be coming to the Speedway. The 108th running of the Indy 500 and the total solar eclipse. And there's a lot of rain across the state. But what makes the Indianapolis Motor Speedway so special? Well, you touched on it a little bit. It's just that history and tradition, the fact that it's been around for so long. And then the this video of seeing it at ground level is so compelling. But let's talk about something that's going to be high up in the sky in the heavens. We're talking the total eclipse. It's about a month away. Indiana is going to be right in the path of totality for, for almost four minutes, nearly four minutes. Can you tell us what the Speedway is doing to commemorate this incredible event? 
Well, we announced that we were going to do it. Uh, Time for you there in, uh, in Indianapolis. Now, the Indy 500 will be held on May 26th this year. So what preparations are being made ahead of the 108th running of the race? Well, you're right. I am out of the rain. I'm actually speaking to the people showing up for the races. I mean, that, that facility holds a, a huge number of people. What, uh, 400,000. What measures are in place to keep race fans safe? All those people when you have unfavorable weather. Well, so we were days it's year round, as you know, with, with possible weather. Um, you know, the Speedway holds so many people. Is it open year round? What else there can people do when there's not a race going on? You know, the grand. Okay, okay. so the Indianapolis Motor, Speed, Motor Speedway, easy for me to say, may be the best thing in Indianapolis, but is there anything else about the Hoosier State that you think deserves some attention, deserves an, an honorable? Cool, and incredible. Incredible. very unexpected. Wow. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of great things, as we've heard from our viewers in Indiana. Yes, so, do. Doug Bowles, president of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, thank you for joining us and highlighting the Speedway and uh, talking about what's best in state. Absolutely. Hey, let's keep the story on Indianapolis. Weather-wise, this we have a concern for flooding across parts of the south and east because of this. This is the rain we've had and the rain that is coming here. So there's a widespread area that picked up about three to five inches of rain. Georgia, South Carolina, a couple spots in South Carolina, even more than that, like five to eight here from Columbia down to Charleston. And so we've got more rain that is coming in, about three to five inches of rainfall across uh, the I-20 and South Corridor. That's gonna be some of the heaviest stuff. It's been falling already in Jackson, Mississippi, but you're gonna see more of that into Alabama, into Georgia, and just some bigger rainfall rates is really what's gonna drive this. It's going to be heavy rain that lasts for a couple of hours. Likely flooding here um, for us. Again, I-20 just south, that'll be the zone to watch, but there's a pretty big area that goes to Louisiana all the way into South Carolina where heavy rain could cause some problems. Hydroplaning on the roads going to be one issue. Roads that just get maybe one lane that gets waterlogged. You know how that goes. And sometimes you, if you're familiar with the area, you know the typical storm uh, spots that take in, uh, take on too much water. We're going to watch for that through early tomorrow morning in Atlanta, but then tomorrow into Sunday, let's keep an eye on South Carolina, North Carolina, Raleigh, Charlotte. These are spots that will be dealing with too much rainfall. And Charleston, too, watching out for you because we will have an onshore wind for a while, and around the time of high tide, that plus the rainfall could also cause some flooding issues there. Large-scale area, you know, you look at Greenville, Macon, Albany, Dothan, all spots that are under the flood alerts and the flood watches as we go through tomorrow. Rainfall right now has been moving across West Tennessee and Mississippi. We've got the rain on the move by tonight. This is midnight. Almost the entire state of Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, and most of North Carolina covered with rain. There's a lot of rain out here. And you know some of it will be heavier than others. And we've highlighted that in the darker green color. We'll see that as we get into your Saturday afternoon. You see how it moves east. So now it's by afternoon, it's pretty much completely out of Alabama. We'll be watching for the showers on the way out of Atlanta, maybe just a few left in North Georgia, really, at this point. We'll see South Georgia, though, and Eastern uh, and South Carolina, the low country. You get into some heavy rain once we get into the afternoon hours, and then by Sunday, we finally get a break, and this will be this will be your day to get out there and do any cleanup here after the big rainfall. A couple of gauges that we're keeping an eye on for flooding, at least some minor flooding in Georgia. A couple of flood warnings are up here as well, as well as into South Carolina. So, you know, Reynolds, it's not just the rivers. I think it's streams and creeks that you really got to pay attention to, too. Jen, last fall in no big events that could occur in your community. A soggy Friday here in the south. Places like Jackson, Mississippi, are already seeing some of the brunt of the storms and some rainy conditions. Are un We're under a flash flood warning in uh, Jackson, yeah. so it's going to be raining for a while. Yeah, oh, it's been raining all morning. We've been checking yeah. this tower cram third. This is the third hour. We're looking at the rain still falling heavily at times. And while we don't see flooding per se right here, the roads look really wet. Well, that is a big story, but then we've got the other kind of precipitation, snow, which is also a big topic, right? I mean, where's this? this? Nebraska, what? North Platte, North Wowzers. Platte. Oh my gosh! Look what at all the snow. It's just incredible. My goodness. And you see the trains moving, and well, the trains we've had, atmospherically speaking, that have been bringing in the snow stacked up. What are the numbers we were talking about? We had 15.3 yesterday. Wow. That was a daily record, of course, um, but it was an all-time record. Goodness. So that was our biggest snow ever in a single day. Yeah, on on one, right. And on one hand, when you say that, it's like, really? Wow, yesterday? But then when you think about it, 15 inches in central Nebraska, it's hard to get that kind hard of moisture. Hard to get that kind of moisture, yeah. Right, so that's a, 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 interesting how it works together. There's almost like two pieces of energy involved with our yeah. system. One that's moving through Texas, but there's another one up near Nebraska, and that mm -hmm. really helps squeeze out all the moisture we have, and there's a lot involved, a lot of moisture yeah. involved in this system. Beautiful precipitation in clearly one of the world's prettiest cities. I mean, just fantastic. What a great view that we have there. Hey, uh, by the way, though, in today's big deal, whether we're ending the work,